What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how I care for my Ficus microcarpa tiger bark. So as you may know, this is the tiger bark ficus. Uh, it's also been called the golden gate ficus, and it has a plethora of other names out there, common names, but it is, alas, the ficus microcarpa. And this is one of my favorite bonsai trees. Uh, I've had him, jeez, I don't even know how long now, but uh, he's gone through a couple of rough spells. As you can tell, he's got a couple of spots over here where the leaves have stopped growing. A little patch over on this side that's a little bit larger that leaves don't grow anymore. Uh, and he's all in all needs to get ready for the fall and winter time, even though it's already fall. I wanted to go ahead and uh, give him a new home. Now, you really wouldn't do this uh, this time of year. You would probably want to do this in the spring or summertime that you would really want to repot your bonsai trees. But like I said, he's gone through a little bit of a rough spill and I want to kind of uh, tweak him up a little bit to make sure that he's going to actually be okay and ready for the slow season ahead. Uh, but this is a tropical evergreen tree. So this plant is not deciduous. He will not be losing his leaves. They may occasionally turn yellow <clears throat> and drop a couple, and that's fine. Uh, but if they lose all their leaves, that's not a good sign at all, and your plant will probably die. But uh, I think this guy's native to around Asia, uh, China, uh, but they are like kind of in the tropics, subtropical region. So they're used to a decent amount of sunlight, a good amount of humidity, a good amount of rain, and you know specific nutrients in their environment that they probably don't get. Uh, where you're from unless you're from around that area, but me I'm from northern Kentucky and this tree does not get exactly what it needs in my environment that it would over in its home environment. So that all needs to be taken into consideration whenever you're going to uh, pick your plant and repot it or put it in a specific location. Uh, but a lot of people say that this tree can be grown indoors. I strongly discourage you from doing that. This is a tree trees need to be outside they can be indoors for a day or two but anything longer than a couple of days you really shouldn't have them indoors they should be outside and this guy should be outside in direct sunlight but they can take a little bit of shade especially if it's one that doesn't have an established cuticle or one that you're not sure if he has an established cuticle you want to err on the side of caution and introduce him into the sunlight a little slowly and basically the cuticle is the uh, protective layer over the plant more specifically the leaves and stems uh, that will actually kind of protect it from its environment and a good deal amount from the sunlight too. So uh, it has to actually establish a cuticle if it's been indoors for a long time, say in a big box store, it hasn't really established a really good cuticle. So uh, you always want to err on the side of caution whenever you're purchasing a new tree. Uh, even if you think that it's been outside or maybe it's been next to a larger window for some time, always err on the side of caution and introduce them into the sunlight slowly. These leaves will scorch and they will burn from the sun and if left unchecked your plant could potentially die. So always err on the side of caution and introduce them slowly. The first day, you'd probably want to set it in some direct sunlight for about 15-20 minutes. The next day, you go up in about a 10 minute increment, uh, and so on, and do it rather slowly. And then, uh, after a week or two of that, your plant will be ready to go ahead and be in full direct sunlight. As long as you're taking other factors into consideration, water, humidity, and temperature in that formation as well. Uh, but, like I said, these guys, established plants, do like direct sunlight. Uh, I have mine sitting outside on my front porch, and that is a south exposure, so he gets around 10 hours of direct sunlight a day. Uh, there is a little bit of shade that comes over the porch towards the evening, so at night he does have a little bit of protection during the hotter part of the day. They do like morning sun, and then when it gets really hot afternoon and the uh, sun gets more intense, they do like to have a little bit of protection if you can afford to give them some protection. Uh, but like I said, mine gets around 8 to 10 hours of sunlight a day, and towards the evening, uh, 
sometime after like three or four, closer to five, it does get a little shady, but not entirely. Uh, so it does start out with a decent amount of morning light and then some in the afternoon. And then as the day goes on and progresses, it does get a little bit more shady where he sits. And that helps him a lot. <clears throat> like I said, as it starts to get hot and more intense sunlight, uh, these do benefit from a little bit of shade and a little bit of protection from all that intense sunlight. Water, you really want to take that into consideration too. <clears throat> like I said, these are tropical evergreens. Uh, so they need to keep their leaves year round and uh, they like a decent amount of rain. You don't want the soil to dry out completely. You would like it to remain moist. You don't want it to be saturated and you don't want it to be dry. There is a balance for the soil on this tree. Now take a look at these leaves here. They are a little bit smaller they are really kind of waxy and thick, kind of succulent-like too. So they're decent at holding in water and moisture for the tree, but that doesn't mean that they don't lose any water or moisture at all. So they do need a decent amount of water, but not too much. So it's kind of like that Goldilocks zone where there is too much and there is not enough, but you have to find that right balance for them. And if you do, they're happy and right as rain. I think with mine, God, it gets really hot in Kentucky, especially around uh, June and July and in August. So I'm watering mine. If I know the temperature is going to be over 85 degrees on up to 90, I will water him once a day, maybe twice, depending on how hot it is. And like I've said before, once temperatures top out over 85 to 90 degrees, your plant stops photosynthesizing. That sunlight gets too intense and too hot, and to help conserve energy and nutrients, your plant will stop photosynthesizing. So if you're watering it a bunch on top of that, then you can end up succumbing your plant to root rot rather quickly. So uh, you do want to find that little balance with that uh, because they do need some moisture to help them get through that intense sunlight and that hot temperature uh, but if you give them too much they can't succumb so there's always that balance you want to look for when you're raising a bonsai tree or any tree or plant in particular and like I said these guys hail from the tropics so keep that in mind as well humidity is very important with these guys too in some aspects now a lot of people will say they can tolerate low levels of humidity and that's true that hails back to the waxy kind of succulent type leaves so they don't lose a whole bunch of moisture but they do lose some uh, so you do want to take that into consideration, but if you're like me and you're trying to develop these nice, thick, aerial roots here that you see, moisture is key on these uh, aerial roots all over this tree. Uh, that's one way that I find is really particular and it is very helpful in developing aerial roots is moisture and humidity for these trees. Uh, but again, there is a balance for that too. So if you're giving it too much moisture, you're going to encourage rot and they will start to kind of crumble and stop growing and you'll uh, develop root rot too. So, uh, but if you don't give it enough moisture, you will have a harder time producing these aerial roots that uh, these trees are pretty famous for. So as they get older and get larger and more established, if they have the right amount of humidity levels and moisture levels, they will uh, actually develop aerial roots easier. So I'm not saying that that's the only way to do it, but that is the way that I find is best for my environment with my trees in developing aerial roots quicker. Now, how the plant gets its name, as you can tell, is the bark. So you can see it's got all these white spots on it. It's very textured like, and it looks like it's got stripes. So it's got the name Tiger Bark Ficus. Now I believe the Golden Gate Ficus comes from like Taiwan, where the name kind of translates loosely to like Golden Hair or Golden Gate. And I believe that there are islands off the coast of China that they call the Golden Gate Islands or something like that. I may be a little bit off on that. And forgive me if I am, but I know that the kind of symbol for Golden Gate and Golden Hair kind of looks similar, so it's been called the Golden Gate Ficus, but it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with our Golden Gate in San Francisco, uh, but that's where it kind of translates from with Taiwan and how it 
came across the name of the Golden Gate Ficus, but I've always called it the Tiger Bark Ficus. So just a little FYI there. Now, like I said, I've had this guy for a while now. Um, I believe I got it from Wigert's Bonsai, and they are spectacular. They have really great bonsai trees. Uh, I'm not trying to upsell them in any way, but I've got a lot of bonsai trees from them. And you can tell with these kind of plastic pots and their colorful pots that that I think is where I got this one from. And it's a great tree, and like I said, I've given it a little bit of a problem, I think, when I set it outside, and it came into a cold spell, it had a little bit of a problem, and lost a couple of leaves, but you live, you learn. And these trees are fairly hardy trees. They can tolerate a little bit of cold, but not too much. So with temperatures, you really want to keep an eye on that because they are tropical trees. Um, typically, I grab mine and bring them indoors if I know the temperature is going to be at 50 degrees or lower. Uh, but, I know, a couple of days ago it dropped down to like 42, down to like 38, 39, somewhere around that. And I had brought all my tropical trees inside and when I did that there was like 115. There was a lot. And I left him outside and the next day I ran out half naked and was like oh my god and he was sitting out there but that was a couple days ago and he looks okay i haven't seen any problems with the leaves but i tell you that story to let you know that these guys are hardier trees they can take a little bit of cold spells okay but they can't tolerate frost so if you know it's going to actually frost set an alarm on your phone and i always say this i should have done this for me uh, but i grabbed all my other trees and forgot this one so always make sure that you don't forget any of your trees or tropical plants <clears throat> because had it gotten any coder i would have lost this guy and this is one of my favorite bonsai trees out there and i would not have forgiven myself it would have been horrible Alas, he's okay <laughs> And I am very thankful for that. So I do want to go ahead and check him out and trim some of this uh, branch and bark back that looks like he's lost a little bit of leaves to help him encourage growing out new, beautiful, thick leaves and that luscious crown that he used to have because he's actually trying to uh, grow all that back and encourage more aerial roots down in here too. So without any further ado and ranting and raving and talking, I want to tell you how I'm going to do that. But first, I want to show you his new beautiful pot that I found for him. Well, I shouldn't say I found. I found it online, and I made it with our 3D printer. Cameraman helped me, and it's spectacular. I love it. I didn't think I was going to like the color, but it looks really good. Uh, I believe this pot is around 19, 20 centimeters and then this one is around 23, 24, somewhere. It's a little bit wider, and it's a little bit taller ish i don't know uh but i think it's gonna do him wonders i think it's gonna be great for him and it's gonna give him a little bit more room to kind of spread out uh and he needs new soil too he's been in this pot for at least two or three years so i want to go ahead and put him in a new one and i believe all that will actually kind of help him get ready for the winter dormancy and like i said these are tropical evergreen trees so his winter months aren't going to be too different from the summer months they are going to have some slight discrepancies uh, but I do want to go ahead and make sure that he's ready for the upcoming slowing season and get him ready for his new pot so I will go ahead and prepare this like I said this pot is spectacular it's got a huge um, drainage hole in the middle for wiring and drainage and then it's got several wiring holes in the middle and other holes for drainage in there too uh, I did this with our 3d printer and I think it was a 20 hour print and then we had to print the legs on here and super glue them on so I love it and I would recommend that if you are an avid bonsai enthusiast that you get you a 3d printer because I've done this and they are spectacular now I know a couple of libraries will actually print some of them uh, you can uh, pay for it and bring it uh, in on a flash drive and they'll print it out for you but it is worth actually having your own if uh, you are as serious about it as I am so all right, so all I went out there and did was uh, put some soil down just because he's got those large holes and I didn't want all the bonsai solo to actually go ahead and fall through all that. And I have my trusty pot below me to help catch all this debris so I'm not just putting all this on the carpet there. Now, I want to go ahead and look this over and see to make sure that his roots look well. That's funny, I didn't even realize my outdoor cat had come in. 
that's what that meowing yeah, was. So as always, I will tell you, use your isopropyl alcohol to actually sanitize and clean any of your tools that you may be using on your tree, especially anything that may potentially cut it or poke it. You don't want to create a <clears throat> potential entry point for disease or pest or anything of that nature or rot to come in. So always sanitize your pruning shears and any other tools you may be using. So like I said, I just want to lightly scour over the root mass. And loosen some of this up just to kind of look at the roots and see how they have fared over the years. Alright, so I forgot to mention that one of the reasons why I wanted to do all this was because I was worried with all the patchiness of the crown. There may have been a problem with the roots in here. So I did want to go ahead and check, check to make sure that I didn't have anything that may indicate any kind of root rot. And as I've mentioned before, when you are looking for root rot, there are a couple things you want to kind of look for. One, you want to make sure that all the roots look fairly uniform in color. You don't want them to be all kind of golden and blonde like these and then have a patch of blackness that may indicate root rot. If you have discolored roots or any kind of mushiness with the roots that aren't very hard but they are kind of squishy and mushy and then when you kind of pull on them their outer protective covering comes off the roots. That usually indicates root rot. And then you're going to kind of get in there and smell a little bit too because you can actually kind of tell if something is rotted out by the smell too. So always just kind of take your time and kind of thumb through it lightly. You're not here to rip anything out. You're just kind of trying to loosen it all up. And look him over. I don't see any kind of uh, infection or any kind of infestation. It all looks pretty uniform and pretty well too. So I am rather excited about his root mass here. I think he's fared fairly well. All right, now I'm gonna come in here with the pruning shears and just kind of lightly prune back all this excess off. Take the time to remove any kind of weeds that may be siphoning off valuable nutrients for your tree. And be very careful while you hold it because you don't want to break off any of the aerial roots or bark that it needs for protection and just for aesthetics too. Okay, next I will come in here and just lightly tamp down some of this soil here. I don't want to press it down too hard because I want the roots to be able to kind of work their way in. Get it back in this old home just for a second. And remove some of the soil just because in the middle his tap root is a little bit more pronounced than I like. All right. Next, I'm going to get my bonsai soil and apply it.
I didn't want to come in here with any wiring and wire them down in here. Though I may have to. If I do, I will do an update video on that. Uh, and like I said, the middle, he is raised up a little bit. Uh, that's because I did put a little bit of layer of dirt in there, and then his taproot was a little bit more pronounced than I really realized it was. So I probably should have made the pot a little bit taller. Um, but over time, gravity will help kind of weigh it down, and then water will help kind of soften the soil down below, and he will sink down some too. So it won't always be up on this high little ledge in the middle. Uh, but if it is, then over the springtime, I will go ahead and release another video and uh, fix that and take care of it. Alright, so now the last thing I want to do is go ahead with my uh, crimpers and come in here and remove a lot of these uh, dead branches to help create some more room for uh, his crown to kind of butt out next season. Alright, I freed up a good amount of space in here. Hopefully that'll create some more room. And then over the next couple years, his crown will fill out more. Now these dead and dying branches will never come back, but hopefully if I cut down to the new wood, we'll get a little bit of growth in here over the years to come. And besides, it really kind of frees up any uh, new growth to come in here and not be rubbing other branches raw here and you can tell a lot of it's dead because it just kind of comes off when you touch it cut it down to that new wood there it should be okay and now he's got plenty of room to kind of branch out in the future all right now the only other thing i've got to do is water him and he's good i've got to go get the cat out before he tears down the door all right guys well while you're at it go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever had any kind of success or failures with the tiger bark ficus like i said it's one of my favorite bonsai trees it's really pronounced it's got beautiful bark it's got great foliage it even has little ornamental figs that kind of grow on it uh, but the tree is toxic so just so you know don't let anybody chew on it or uh, eat anything because it probably can cause problems. And again, it is the ficus family that it belongs to, so it can have irritating sap. So anytime that you get in here and do a bunch of pruning, you really ought to be wearing gloves because if you get that on your hands or in your eyes or in your mouth, there can be problems. So just keep that in mind whenever you're going in here and you're pruning or fixing up uh, your tree. All right, guys, well, that concludes the video. Like I said, the next time I need to get in here, the next thing I need to do is get in here and water, and uh, hopefully it'll help dissipate that mound. Like I said, his, his taproot is a little bit more pronounced than I thought, and I went ahead and added a little bit of soil in there to kind of give him a nice bed to lay on, but I think over time that will kind of dissipate, especially with gravity and watering. Uh, so, as always, I want to go ahead and give a special shout-out to my top-tier tree patrons like them. Thank you. I'd also like to give another shout out to my other patrons like David and Heather. Keep an eye out too, I think soon I'm going to be reevaluating the Patreon thing for my uh, viewers and probably making a couple of changes, but I will do a little video or an announcement just to let you know what changes I've made and uh, how that will affect everything in the future. If you'd like to donate to my channel through Patreon, please check the link in the description box below. As always, the donations go to help keeping all these beautiful plants alive. Plenty of fertilizer, nice clean water, the lights going for the winter months, uh, for the LEDs and the high pressure sodiums. As you know, all that's kind of expensive and being a plant dad is rather costly. So any uh, donation would be greatly appreciated and I really do thank you from the bottom of my heart. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know any time that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.